Hello everyone. Um, today I am going to uh, show you how uh, you can really very easily make um, a three step earring. Uh, what I'm going to do now is use, uh, choose the, the three um, sizes that you're going to use. Like I said, it's a three step earring. So I'm going to be choosing the two, three, four, five, five, four and three in this order. Five, four and three. I've just taken a small ball of clay. Um, I will put it in the fifth one, press it down, cut off the excess, take it out, keep it. Yeah. Um, I'll do the same thing once again. Remember it's a earring, so we'll need a pair of each. There you go. Okay. So that's the fifth one. Uh, what I will do is I'll actually make this. I'll make the cone part of it, put in the hooks and let it actually dry for a little while. So what happens is when you try doing all the three levels together, you might end up disfiguring some of the pieces because you're trying to interconnect, uh, you know, multiple levels. So in this case, what might help is for you to actually make the pieces, let it sit for about an hour or so, let that level dry then you can work on the other two levels and you know put it in it's it's a lot easier when you do it in parts rather than trying to cramp, cramp it all in one go um, i just put a couple of drops of water there make it into a round ball you've already uh, seen my video i mean obviously uh, you know to the new uh, to the new subscribers who have not seen uh, the video that i have put up on uh, how you can make conical shaped or rather anything in a conical shape easier i'll provide that link as well so you know take a look at that so this is a round ball doesn't have to be too perfect i would use uh, you know these three fingers basically the middle the index and the thumb in this position and press and turn press and turn so when i constantly press and turn you already see that there is a rough a really rough conical shape that's already formed just take it on from there so press turn press turn press turn press turn so when you keep pressing and turning you automatically because the position of your finger is like this there is already a cone that is formed there so you just need to keep doing that consistently don't spend too much time on one piece of clay because you must remember that the heat from your body is constantly drying out the clay as well and uh, once you realize that you have, you know, come to a shape like this, it's still not done. Remember that this is still very, um, it, it's still, still not the neatest form. The neatest form to me is when you have a nice round base and you have all these, uh, you know, all these kinds of imperfections over here. You just kind of neaten it as much as possible. I would do the same thing over here. Hold it and just flatten the surface like this remember it's not straight so it's not going to go this way it's not going to go straight it, because it's curved it's going to be you know because it's conical it is going to turn this way so you know help it you help turn so that it maintains and gets a really flat you know neat surface remember to tap so tapping helps get a smooth round flat base repeat the process I have my fettling knife here keeping in mind that this is something uh, that you might probably try doing when you're starting off you can just do very very basic designs you can draw lines um, you know, vertically, horizontally, anything. So here what I'm going to do is choosing to do some um, zigzag lines. You must have seen me do this before. I'm going to do like 45 degree angle lines, uh, equidistant. Just there, you know, try to keep it as equal as possible. This is just my way of doing it. I mean, you might be more you know, continuous and doing it. And when I say continuous, I'm like, you know, you might probably be more comfortable doing immediately this step. So I'm not, uh, I prefer doing it this way. And once that's done, you can use your nozzle. If you don't have this, uh, you can always use your uh, ballpoint pen refill. 
the back end of a ballpoint pen refill. And the last one, I'll just repeat this one. I'll just give it a quick light. I mean, I'm not putting, applying too much of a pressure over here. Very light. Tap once again at the base and I have a beautiful, really basic design conical jhumka here. I'll do the same thing on this one as well. So as you see, I have actually completed both the jhumkas in this manner. See that? Uh, what I'm going to do now is put in the hook. I'm using a gauge 26 all the way for, I mean, all these hooks are gauge 26 nichrome wires. So, yeah. Um, what I'm also going to do is put in the hooks even at the base. I won there. In about an hour's time, this should, this should firm up pretty well. So it's uh, been roughly about uh, 50 minutes uh, to an hour roughly. And uh, this is kind of firmed up, you know, I'm able to hold it without too much, um, well, without too much care. Uh, let's begin with the other level. So remember that this was basically five. So I'm going to be doing now on the fourth one. Put it in. Remember that at all these stages, uh, this is not oiled. Uh, it doesn't matter. You don't have to really oil it. You don't have to worry about the shape that it comes out. Uh, so yeah. So a drop of water there. Make it into a round ball. We repeat the process. One catch is that that the size as it goes lower. Um, obviously, doing the um, you know this technique is going to be a little bit more difficult, but it'll be fine. You'll get it with practice. Uh, the same thing again. You know, three fingers press. Turn, press, turn. Take this particular, uh, take another hook, put it through this. I'm using my bent nose plier. You can just use, you know, your uh, regular plier. Grip this and Put it straight in. Now you probably make sense as to why it, um, you know, it, it is it is necessary so that one part of it is at least dry. So just one thing though, when you are actually making the first one, don't forget to put the base pin because once this part completely dries, uh, well, you can't do anything much. Uh, you'll have to just make use of this as something else then. So please make sure that you plan all these things uh, uh, well in advance in terms of how many layers it's supposed to have and all that. Let's do the next one now. At this stage, what you can do is you can actually choose to put the other pin as well. For example, this one, I'll just put the other pin. So after about 30 minutes, let's begin doing the next one. The next one is the third circle, the third uh, whatever you want to call this. Uh, I put in a little small ball of clay, press, cut off the excess, take it out and I'll just add a little bit of water to this. Remember, this is going to be really tricky. Uh, this is something that, you know, would be good for a stick bead size. Uh, but, you know, we're going to be making a little jhumka out of this. So you can imagine the, well, the effort. Uh, so what happens is with three, sometimes you might not get the grip for this. So I might actually just use my index and my thumb finger uh, and my thumb, sorry, and just press and turn, press and turn. And you will still end up with something like this. You see that? Shape in this. Okay. That's done. Now, that's a quick check on the base slider. I put the gungru bead straight in. You see that? That's like a really, really teeny tiny little jhumka. 
and uh, now that this is obviously firmed up you see that you know it's a lot easier to hold on to such things when it's uh, when, when you allow time and what i'm going to do now is put this little pin through this hold it using the bent nose plier and just insert that pin into the last lip with the other pair you know in parallel so if you are wondering what happened to the other one this is also ready so is this one thank you so much once again bye